you know, um, I'd seen your name, uh, you know, on uh, online and I had reached out to you once or twice about if there's any way I could be part of, you know, part of something. Cause it seemed like you guys had a really interesting gig going on. And um, I think I pestered you once or twice enough and you gave me an opportunity. Sure. To be part of this stuff. And um, I think I did these roughly, I think last December I drew these, um, which was before I got my hands on the first book that you guys did. The, the first one that you sent to me. And, um, I, I might be kind of, I kind of, I was going to say, I'm glad that I did the pages first. Cause I might've been intimidated that one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Go I, uh, it, on it. What we call this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, that's what you said there is not unusual. I've heard that before. And you know, right. I, I'm not an artist myself or at least not much of one, not publishable quality. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of really talented people that are in this book. But the thing that I always tell everybody is I asked you for a reason, right? Like if I didn't see something in your work or see how it could fit in with with the rest of the the, um, uh, the stories that are in these books, then I wouldn't have asked you, you know. And generally when I ask somebody, it's because I want them to do exactly or something very close to what I saw them doing. You know what I mean? Like. You've already passed the audition by the time I say, sure, do something, you know, especially if I give you uh, uh, pages, plural, and not just uh, just a pinup, you know, because uh, right. that's that's what it's all about, you know. Yeah. And I knew that um, you given me an opportunity to, to draw something. I still I, ha I still had to prove myself by producing something. And I, I told you, there's only so much a person can say, you know, you can't judge a person by what they think or what they say, only what they do. That's true. And uh, I was like, I take this seriously and I was going to show it to you. And so I stopped doing my own fan comic and I set it aside and I'm okay. like, I'm going to produce these. And I wanted to, I did the best that I could do in as timely a manner as I could come up with. And, um, so I really appreciate it because when I talked about that first book that you showed and then the uh, the most recent one, The Crimson Wrecking that came out, just flipping through them, I'm like shocked at the quality of guys you find. Yep, that one right there. So um, it made yeah, me really I mean, it's, even it's more. All, it's all just people that I find on the internet, social media. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's like as simple as that. Um, yeah. You know, it's like I always say, you know, there's there's a lot of evidence that suggests that social media is very bad for us and it's had a really negative effect on society. I will not debate against that because the proof sure. is putting in a lot of cases. But for me personally, <laughs> it's been a godsend. I, I didn't even dream of making comics after a lifetime of loving them. I didn't think I'd ever have some sort of an entry point uh, until things started to happen on social media that allowed me. Right to be able to make friends with all these different artists who are really great, who, who feel like there's something that I can do for them to help them level up. And that's, uh, yeah. that's something I cherish yeah. and is very, very important to me. And I sort of think of it as being like my life's work, to be honest, at this point, it seems like this is what I was supposed to be doing all this time. That makes sense. I get it. When you have the creative drive, you know, I mean, you said that you're not an artist, at least in a way that you can't, publish physical art but i would i would count you are an artist you create you push you you wheel these into reality even if you didn't physically draw that makes you an artist a creative and, and the, an important part because so many people can draw but then they don't know what else to do you right. know the drive to create the thing and follow through as you have done is a major component well thank you um a big part of what i like to talk about and think about and <laughs> I made a deal with myself a long time ago that when it comes to comics, I wouldn't really edit myself very much. I feel like in my my professional life, the things that I do to pay the bills, um, I'm sort of a sellout. Like I'll I'll write anything for anybody in a lot of ways when it comes down to it, within reason. You know, I don't I don't, sure. um, I don't do anything that's evil, but like I definitely am not singing my own song when it comes to the things that I write in my marketing uh life a lot of the time so for comics i i determined that i would always sort of shoot from the hip and tell the truth and do things the way that i want to do them so it's in that spirit that i say this there's a certain kind of comic book that i'm sure everybody who sees this who likes comics or cares about comics has seen where it's very much a writerly comic 
you can tell that the writer told the artist specifically what to draw where and you can also usually tell that that's a, a thing that's happening by just the walls of dialogue all through yeah. it, right where it's like i never think <laughs> of the art as something i hire right that's not the way that i look at this is all i'm the writer and producer of this thing i think of myself as like the robert evans of comics this level of right comics. So you're the director, the cinematographer, all the special effects, every actor. So once it goes into your hands, it's roughly out of mine. And I look forward to seeing what you produce. And it's a lot of trust. And yeah. That's all there yeah. is. I feel like that creates the work that's the most impressive because you have a sense of what I like and, and what I'm into. And, and you have the full um encouragement for me to push against the boundaries of what we know comics to be and what we know art to be um and then you, you're free to do whatever you want with with it within reason right <laughs> yeah yeah that makes sense to me and in the, in the best case scenario if if an artist has enough skill sets to translate what needs to be done because some guys you know you, you, if you're too much of an amateur you haven't done enough you wouldn't know how to but I, I agree with you where you have the opportunity to like, tell me what the basic plot is. Tell me the key points that need to be shown where, but then you give me the freedom to kind of build around it because I'm the visual artist. I might be able to do that a little bit better because I'm the guy who does it page by page is the drawing. And like you were saying, when someone's directing from the script, I've heard someone just, you know, like panel two, low angle shot looking up with, you know, I'm like, why, yeah. why are you? telling me a low angle shot or a close up shot like let me visually tell the story or at least let me have the opportunity to do it first run and then right. i'll be open to it you know like well let's i don't talk want this to be a drag for you you know i mean the whole reason i do this it's a very art forward book it's about artists more than it is about me and that's very important yeah. you know the yeah. stories are very simple you know as we'll see in the one that we're going to talk about here like it's very much just like you know, this person fights this person or, you know, this person is trying yeah. to get this MacGuffin or some sort of thing. And then really the way that it's designed is for people to hopefully read more than a few of them or maybe all of them, even if we're really getting lucky uh, and see that there's a bigger story that's told throughout. Now, so far, I haven't had very many people that have done that right now. Now, that's that's OK. You know, that's all right. People like the book. People are buying the books. Um, and that's cool. But um, your story, for example, is actually part of a larger tapestry of stories that we began uh, in the Ghost Agents Apocalyptico book uh, in the uh, third story. Uh, Riders Howling in the Moonlight. Right. And in this one, Donna uh, uh, has to go to her. Uh, once upon a time homestead of needles california on a mission and it goes bad and she ends up losing her friend to some uh methed out werewolf type creatures explaining the plots of comics is always ridiculous but that's i know, it kind of know. Weird. <laughs> so there's other things that transpire along the way that are going to be in this book ghost agents metropolis that sort of pick up from where that story left off without ever anybody needing to read all of them by the way I like to maintain yeah. that accurate voice. But your story is sort of the grand accumulation of that, and it's the climax of that story, because Donna has finally tracked down the place uh, where she believes that this uh, methamphetamine, uh, werewolf uh, methamphetamine is, is uh, uh, originating from, and she's going to go shut down the big boss. So that's what's going on in these pages. Awesome. Yeah. I, uh, when you gave me the kind of the basic overview and, you know, started out splash page of her on a motorcycle and I had to kind of be sure on like the era, the time frame, And then you were very specific about a kind of motorcycle. So I did some looking, so it looks era specific or at least as close as I could come up with. So very important. Um, Thank you. Yeah. And, and motorcycles yeah. give people a lot of pause. I've understood. I've grown to understand when I, when I ask somebody to draw, Don is a motorcyclist. You know, and I have to make clear with the person that's going to be drawing the story uh, whether or not they find that challenging. And then based on that, we decided if it has a motorcycle or not, basically. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was something I've only done once or twice in my life, so I, I had to kind of focus on it. But I, I get it. You did great. It's, I mean, it's a beautifully rendered image. Everything about it, it works right. It, it pushes it me to stretch. 
Yeah. Uh, it makes me stretch and try something new. And every time that's not a bad idea. To, so, you know, not, not a bad idea to push yourself into uncomfortable territory and try something new because you learn. So I had a lot of fun with that opening page. And then, um, again, I'm, of course, I'm a comic artist. I'm going to try and make the girl the most beautiful girl I could possibly render. You know what yeah. I mean? Some guys don't make that a focal point, and I get it. I get, I respect it, but right. Well, I don't know. know. I mean, I never want it to be like a TNA kind of a thing. You know, I, I sure. Important. <laughs> like I never want it to feel like it's one of those types of books. You know. Sure. Um, and uh, no, you did a fine job with that. Yeah, I um, I had the occasion the other night to. Uh, my birthday is the 27th. On the 26th, I had a party, uh, ostensibly for my birthday, but it was also like to sell ghost agents because everything I do now will be to try to sell ghost agents. Um, yes. And a friend of mine was there, uh, this woman, and she she was asking me if it would be appropriate for a kid, like her kid, to read. And it's like, well, it's violent. It's got drug use in it. I was reading much harsher things at seven or eight. Uh, I think I read like the killing joke when I was like eight years old. Um, right. And you know, the old, <laughs> the old cliche is, well, I turned out okay. And it's like, well, did you really, I don't think it, uh, it, unrealistic <laughs> violence is not a problem. And I said, well, let me tell you this. There's no depictions of women that are going to bum you out or give your kid funny ideas about things. Like that's, that's yeah. a point of pride. Like there's, yeah. There's meth wolves and there's stuff like that, but it's like it's all fanciful stuff when you get down to it. So yeah, we're a cat. I don't know any kid. I mean, any kid of my era. I mean, I think we're the same age. I'm 46, so 45. I mean, sure. stuff was the greatest, funnest stuff. It wasn't. I mean, it wasn't really scary. I mean, yeah. I guess a certain movie, something like that, could be kind of scary. I, but this know, type I, of stuff. I had this so fun. with a millennial friend of mine. It's like, you know, I didn't go to school and try to do aliens to another kid. It's like you see Predator. It's not going to, like, mess with your your value system, you know? Sure. I mean, dumb, I feel like. It's like, you know, yeah. just I, let us see it. As she mentioned that he's on video games and stuff. And it's like, okay, well, if you're playing Grand Theft Auto. Seriously, yeah. Better, what you really probably shouldn't be doing, you know? You're, you're talking to right. the world. So, um. Yeah, no, I, I feel I feel safe about it, you know. So on this page, uh, Donna has come upon this house in New Orleans. She's going in to, uh, she thinks, uh, get her final uh, final revenge on. Beautifully rendered page. It's always, it's Thank like you. magic to see that you did this with your hands, you know. I mean, we're looking at the actual page here. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you do video games at all on any level? Do you? I do. I'm 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 like a total. I'm a Grand Theft Auto guy. I'm a WWE guy. I play Spider-Man. I've been playing those games, Grand Theft Auto, wrestling, and Spider-Man games for 25 years. <laughs> right? right. And I'm not, I, I'm, I enjoy them. I'll, I'll play games while I'm listening to a podcast or something. I kind of make up my own right. stories for those because I'm old enough yeah. to know what you had to do to make them good you know, on Atari or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like, I don't often buy a game. Like, I'll keep the same WWE game. And you can make characters and stuff, and I like wrestling, so that's fun for me. And yeah. Like, yeah, I just play the same I, game nonstop. It's basically my MO. It Just you mentioning gaming kind of reminded me, just real quick, have you ever played Red Dead Redemption 2? I haven't yet. And, you know, it's a, it's a rock okay. star game, and they're the people who make Grand Theft Auto. And the yeah. only reason I haven't is because I know it's just going to suck so much of my time away from it me. It does. I only mention that because there's a time in that game where the characters, you travel along and get different homes that you stay in. And this giant building was like referenced roughly the basic structure. Cause I'm like, I needed a big, the way you described the home. And I just, I'm like, That's I have a game that. where I can walk up to it and look at it three dimensionally and see the structure of a building. So it's Very vaguely nice. like a home that's in the game. Nicely done. Nicely so done. Just, just, I just made me think of that. Yeah. But uh, Wally so, yeah. Proud. <laughs> well, that's high praise. Very cool. And then this is. And then monster fighting ensues. Right. And now one of the things that I like to do here too is I don't I don't want anybody to ever be beholden to to much, right? I'm very protective of Donna when people draw Donna a certain way, right? She's six foot six Greek. 
drawer looking like a six foot six Greek woman. Don't over sexualize her. She wears black and white. She's into mod fashion, you know, like that. All that stuff is very particular. But then when it's like time to draw a monster, because the conceit of ghost agents, the only thing in ghost agents that's not as realistic as something you would have seen in a James Bond movie somewhere in the 60s with jetpacks and stuff like that is this 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 idea that this netherworld in this other dimension is full of freaky shit and radiation and radioactive explosions rips holes into our fabric of reality into theirs and they can come here right so everything to do with anything that's science fictiony or 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 that kind of far out stuff is all sort of it it, it all emanates back to that because i want there to be sort of a standard of reality here so the idea that i came up with for that is just like netherworld is a mysterious place and it's like hell it's full of all sorts of stuff so like whatever you want to draw you draw that that's 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 yeah uh, that's the condition that i have here and the idea here is that these these people get high off of this this uh, substance that comes from the netherworld right and that's what makes them into these freaks and these monsters that Donna has to fight. Yeah, you were you're very open on your instruction. Like monsters, you were basically like free reign. And sometimes I feel like I, I know some artists that have like wild, crazy, just insane imaginations with creature design. And that's never been my strength. And I feel like I, I I'm of course as an artist, I always feel like I could have done better. I look back and at I did the best I could in the moment. But then upon reflection, I'm like, oh, I could have done this or I could have done that. But I just tried to make some. My, my take is always that whatever you do is what you needed to do. Because if I didn't ask you to do it, I asked you to do it because I felt you could do it. <laughs> right. Like you'd already passed the audition. You'd already you're already safe from, you know, getting canned <laughs> as long as you produce in a somewhat reasonable time frame. Um, yeah, you're fine. You got nothing to worry about. Like this, this suits the story well. It's what, what what's needed because it still reflects that there's still humans underneath of there someplace, or they were. You know, right. that's important. So nothing, nothing about this hurts the story or the narrative of what we were trying to do here. Well, I'm glad it was fun. I just I feel like I could have if I knew if I had a broader imagination for creature design, maybe it could have been different or interesting. But nah, you're being too hard on yourself. You did fine. <laughs> I appreciate it. And then again, you were like just action scene and have her, you know, you're like a couple of pages of her just like mowing through these monsters. But I believe your instruction was um, she reaches a point where she's not, you know, she's struggling. It's not an easy thing for her. Right. I'm always big on that, too. That's that's it's never really interesting to me to see that, you know, I grew up on the same sorts of fight scenes and comics and TVs and movies and everything else where you need it to be a fight or i need it to be a fight i need it to be that sort of back and forth exciting kind of a thing so you did good you you this this uh these pages definitely depict a struggle yeah uh yeah i was just trying to do all the action and shadows and frenetic you know kinetic line work to imply some kind of energy i'm just trying to employ everything i can kind of imagine to come up with and yeah no try it's very cool you know and i mean the, the the whole idea of these books i'm not interested in conventional comic books do like or whatever images that conjures up when you say conventional comic books not that i have some clear idea in my head of what i don't want but it's just like i want these to always feel like they're pushing up against something and doing something that we maybe haven't seen before. That's what I'm all about. Sure. Oh. Yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then she basically has to eventually give up on trying to find anything here besides violence and disturbing monsters and creatures and eldritch. Is that a word? Abominations. I, I, <laughs> it's one of those words oh. I've seen written. I don't know if I'm saying it right. I probably sound like a dumbass. Right. But she she I, basically has hit the wall of what she can do here, and um, th that what she hoped would be the answers to her questions are perhaps not here. It's just more hellish, hellish uh, encounters with uh, things that no human should ever see. Yeah, I kind of 
liked, I mean, I, I, I tilted this panel at an extreme angle to have her dive in out just to give it a kind of a, you know, a, a, hopefully the idea of a little bit more dramatic kind of feel. And sure. I, I, well, I there's reasons I mean, happy with it. to be said for when, when, Yeah. When you, and sorry to interrupt you, but, but like when you look at a comic page and this is somebody who doesn't really draw, but still like teetered and tooled and played around enough in my life to, to sort of, I've drawn comic pages, whether or not they were good or bad is immaterial. Um, but there's directions <laughs> that action is going in, right? So right, what correct. you've done here is you've created a page where the action is sort of like centered, um, sort of coming towards the reader in a way, is moving away from the reader, is then going this way, and is this coming sort of this way. And then at the end, you've got the um grenade that's flying towards the reader's perspective and then it's exploding right. now think about this if this was cinematic if this was a film like how many times we've changed the perspective it's very disorienting right and that's deliberate right. that's something you've done with an intention to do that right which is a big part of the type of thing that i like for us to do in ghost agents right is to do things that are maybe like kind of jabberwocky and broken but it sort of creates an effect um in this case sort of not unlike like a sam raimi you know i'll reference something here that i always talk yeah. to people in person um is not as an example of this type of storytelling but sort of as an example of how we can use the, the medium and the format to tool around with uh these pages that ben perkins did where donna is tripping on acid while she has to fight off these uh these demons and these uh, yes these, these, these demons but are actually just uh, henchmen but she's tripping so the ink here is saturating the page to an incredible degree like to the yeah, point yeah. where it almost looks like a mistake right but it was not a mistake we very deliberately wanted this to be more than the pages could bear the pages can't even contain what's happening here and that's the sort of thing that I like. And that's the sort of thing that I think is really strong about this page because the shit has well and truly hit the fan. And even if somebody yeah. has no conception of any of what we're talking about here, they can still look at this page and it's it, it has the effect on them that we want it to. Yeah, well, that's good. Um, yeah, I just keep thinking about those pages you just showed from that other book. That was one of my favorite. It was one of my favorite scenes. I can literally say, in all my years of reading comics, I've never seen anything like that. The way it was portrayed, how it started out in her regular world and goes into the drug trippy fight. Like you guys are doing yeah. some wild, interesting stuff. I have never seen this, and that's why it was just. Thanks blown very away. much. Thanks very much. I always think was, about like. Um... You know, like the the Matrix. You remember how when the Matrix came out? I'm really dating myself here. But when the Matrix came out, there was a reason for the bullet time special effects. But then after that, a ton of movies just started using that for no reason. Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. Rule of cool, I guess. Like Charlie's yep. Angels was like that. I think it's so yes. much better when you can make it part of the story. You're not just doing things to show off, but you actually like the reason that it looks like this has a narrative purpose. And that's, that's important. Yeah. And that's a, yeah, big that's a great point. About. Yeah. I yeah. completely understand what you're saying. Yeah. There was a reason for it in the matrix and not in the others. And there was a reason why those pages look the way that they did that, that you were just showing. That's a perfect example. There's Thank you, a though. purpose behind not just because. Yeah, and I think that makes all the difference, really. Like, that's what really makes the difference, is we're, we're doing this for a, a very specific purpose, and uh, here it is, you know, basically is what it comes down to. Yeah. And then ended it on a big splash page, tried to do a big dramatic angle and burning monster bodies and her kind of in silhouette up front. Um, Very good. I like the smoke. I like that you can tell that she is, is um, racked by this experience. I like that you can tell that she's a very tall woman, which is important too. Um, and basically it's a dead end for her as it turns out uh, what she thought would, would give her the big answers. There's no answers here. And this page depicts that well. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And um, I feel like I kind of had the opportunity to learn a lot and try some different things and still feel like I can push myself more. You know, I'm working on my own pages. I was scared. I was sketching on some of my own pages just before we started. I'm like, nice. I had a layout kind of done 
But I'm like, you know what? I have to redo it. I got to think of a better angle. I got to think of something more dramatic. Um, sorry, my lamp right here is <laughs> turning on and off on me. Sorry. No, anyway, uh, it, it, like I said, every page that you draw is an opportunity to learn, you know, and um, try something new and try something different. You just better every page as you go on. Um, so it's an opportunity I really appreciated. So I can't thank you enough. And I can't wait to see the next one, the campaign that we're on the final days, right? We are. Yeah. When people see this, when it's debuted, we're in the final week. So I believe less than seven days at this point to get your copy of ghost agents, Metropolis, uh, ghost agents slash Metropolis, if you will. It's our biggest book yet. It's 150 pages. Um, it's ghost agents on one side, you flip it over and upside down and it's metropolis. So there's actually no back cover to the book necessarily. They both can have equal billing. Uh, the metropolis side, Fritz Lang's metropolis, the old silent film is now in the public domain. Uh, we did not an adaptation of that, but stories that are set in that world. And they now are part of the ghost agents timeline as well. If you read carefully, you'll see how that works. Um, it's our third in these big treasury size books. Uh, we're going to quit doing these big, big books for a while, for at least a year. We're going to roll off of this because it's hard to hard to make the market sustain this. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that um, in most cases, um, you know, especially on the independent level, if somebody put out a book like this, they would leave it be for probably, you know, three years before they would do anything. And we almost immediately did another one and then another after that. Right. So people out there that are seeing this that know anything about ghost agents are probably not even aware of it because obviously there's a lot of things competing for your time all the time. You keep hearing us talk about yep. ghost agents. We're talking about a new product that nobody's seen yet. Uh, and that's ghost agents metropolis. And it's the one that Robert is in here too. Robert's these, these pages were originally going to be in the second treasury, but um, I sort of figured out um, in the process of laying those out that we needed to save them and put them into something else. Uh, and that's what this is, right? So uh, yeah. this is a, a nest egg. The story is important to me. Um, it's it's um, a great case of different artists sort of not realizing that they were contributing to a, a greater, longer, stronger narrative. Uh, but I knew, and uh, it makes me very happy to see them come to fruition. These pages are also going to be colored by Eli Schwab. Uh, he's doing a sort of a mimeograph style two-color process where they'll all be uh, blue, a certain sort of a twilight blue and yellow, right? Sort of to go with the uh, the theme of the story. So um, very, very excited for people to see these pages. I think they're going to yeah. really dig them when it happens. And um, this book's going to be a big deal, I hope. And we're going to we're going to promote it from now till uh, Timbuktu. Ghostagents.net yeah. is always the place to go to figure out what's going on with any ghost agents, anything. That's evergreen, which is to say that you can always go to ghostagents.net and you can always see what we're up to. It's it's always there, and it's always it's always um, a link to whatever the latest Kickstarter is, whatever the most recent product is that you can buy. That's that's always where you can go to see that. Yeah, uh, I meant to throw in there as well that part of one of the reward tiers is these pages. Correct, correct, Amundo. Right. I, I believe think we've one, only sold one of them, which means that all the right, rest there's are one gone. But yeah, there's five other pages so for anybody who's interested if you see any of this and you're interested yeah join us very that. affordably priced i might say um and the thing yes. about it is anybody who doesn't own the original comic art you really man you should i'll just put it that way it's it's when you can see the the actual strokes pencil pen brush strokes on a physical yeah. piece of paper piece of whatever yeah. And you're able to to take from it that it came out of a person's hand and mind. You know, the big thing in, in uh, Metropolis is uh, without the heart, there can be no understanding between the head and the mind, which is or, or the, the hand and the mind. Sorry. Um, I'll say that again. Without the heart, there can be no understanding between the head and the hand. Um, and that's what you get with a real person and something you never get with a machine. <laughs> right. right. AI I, I, I agree. More. Yeah, this is this is yeah. sort of very much a an indictment of using machines to to do your dirty work, which is a big part of what Metropolis is all about, anyway. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, get those pages, folks. That's all I can say. I mean, it's it's uh, if you're watching this, you might know Roberts and uh, you know his skill and you know his ability, and he's telling you straight up that these are some of the best pages he ever did, and uh, you can get them for a song 
and uh, they frame very well. I'm a big advocate for that kind of thing. Here's uh, yeah. a page from Chris Anderson that I look at every day here in my Ghost Agents corner. That was the first finished piece of Ghost Agents art ever, and uh, I can't tell you how much I enjoy having that. It's it's quite a quite a pleasure to own that and have that in my yeah. Life. I have. I'm glad you mentioned it. I got a piece of Chris. Uh, Chris Anderson's original artwork. He did this for me from Oh, Spanish very Comics. cool. Nice. And I stare at this, I, like you're talking about, looking at the original line work and the brush strokes and how he did what he did. I was so That's thrilled totally he let great. me get my hands. So I just, I, I was so ecstatic to be able to get this. So I agree with you. I, I will yeah, never go yeah. digital. Yeah. No, you know, I'm always going to do it by hand. So that's my, yeah. that's my joy. I love it. And I mean, you can use all stuff if you have to for coloring and pencils or whatever, but sure. don't I mean like any sort of sure. you know, anything where it, it creates it for, for you. And it's, you know, it's, I'm fortunate to be in the position that I'm in. I, I, I'm, I'm very, the respect that I get from you guys is very important to me. It means a lot to me that you guys uh, want, want to play with me with this stuff and, and, <laughs> work with me and 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 you know i i will never take for granted what that all means um and the fact that so many people who think they are like me <laughs> are using ai to just make their stuff and it's just like i that's so gross to me i don't i don't yes and that i don't want that in my life that's that's uh yeah that's wrong to put it uh I, I, very bluntly yeah. Hey, well, you make the process very worth it. I mean, the end result of all of the work that everyone puts in is astoundingly awesome. So, you know, that's, well, you. that's I what agree. It is. I agree. I, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of these books that I can't even tell you, man. I mean, it's, they're always, yeah. they're always close to my hand. Um, and I am so, so very happy with them. I think they're fantastic. And thank you for being yeah. a part. And I can't wait for people to see your work, uh, in one of these big treasure size books. Well, I appreciate, I can't wait to see my stuff in it. I mean, like I, I'm, I'm so ecstatic at, to see it finally and hold that and look at it and like, Oh, look, look at this. I'm part of it. Great. So, man. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. It means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Same here. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's, that's enough. We've uh, spent enough time. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity and um, um, I guess that's all we got for now. Very good. Thank you so much. Ghost agents. Right. That's always the easiest way yep. to going on with ghost agents right now. Yep. And I'll have the links in the description. I'll put all of that there so people can click on it and find it. And uh, very good. And yeah. If you're seeing this when it first debuts, act with a sense of urgency because it won't be long that you'll be able to get this uh, Kickstarter campaign. It's cheaper now than it will ever be, especially when it comes down to yeah. And it's also your last chance to get uh, Ghost Agents Apocalyptico in this format, your treasury newsprint size or a treasury size newsprint version of this book. It's going to be a, a more standard trade paperback after that, which means that if you want all three of them, which you probably will, if you want at least one of them, you'll never be able to get all three of them in that treasury size again, which I know triggers the OCD for a lot of people. <laughs> Well, I can't recommend enough the opportunity to see a book in newsprint. I wouldn't have thought it would have had the effect on me that it did. But as soon as I got that package in the mail and I popped it open, I'm like, oh, my God. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not exaggerating. I was like, well, I can't believe how interesting this is. What what yeah. have I been missing in my entire right. life? It's, it's almost subliminal, really, in a way. So, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a big deal. I'm proud. I'm proud of us for figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't cool. recommend people. So. It's very cool. All right, Rocco. Uh, Thanks, Robert. Much okay. appreciated. Good for now. Yep. Absolutely, and, man. Um, Let him know. My intention is to have this up within 24 hours or less. I love that. This do it. This it'll be up as quick as I can get. It's got a process, and I got to download it and do a couple quick things. But uh, it shouldn't. It should be long, and I'll let you know. Very good. Thanks so much, man. Let's okay, do it. man. All right, man. Well, thank you, and I will talk to you soon. Very good. Thanks, man.